at least a few questions. Thank you so much. That was incredibly inspirational and slightly scary. <coughs> um, because you're drawing a picture of the near future that I have trouble envisaging. And you scare me when you say <coughs> that um, sharing economy is, is going to... Oh, you want some water? All of a sudden, yeah. Here he oh. comes. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Jeg bare synes at det er litt skremmende med tanke på at hun skal ta fra meg en tredjedel av klærne mine, og jeg må bli kjent med naboen. Det er... I was just saying... It's okay. I'm sorry. Um, you scare me when you going... To, that I have to give away a third of my clothes, and I have to get to know my neighbor. I don't want to. <laughs> People my age want to own things, mm -hmm. because that makes us feel safer. How are you going to... It's a wonderful conversation, and it's not, it's not new. Um, so I always joke that my grandparents look at me like, this is not new. This is how we used to, like, what? It's not new. This is how we used to live. Um, and then I used to say millennials, but now I'll say, like, anybody under 40. It's like, totally makes sense. I've got my smartphone. This is just how I access things. Generally speaking, the demographic that is the hardest to get to understand this is roughly the baby boomers. When you're brought up in an era in which having more, more is better, there wasn't the same sense of resource scarcity. We needed to keep productive assets productive, you know? And for me, I, I'm not, I always am very careful to say, I'm not trying to convert anybody. And, I'm not, and I certainly don't judge anybody. I understand why this happens. It's more about showing the menu of options available. And in fairness, very tactically, I'm going after where is the low-hanging fruit around the world of people who are ready. And so that demographic, which interestingly tends to be a lot of leadership positions in companies today, but it won't be that way 10 or 20 years from now. And we're just looking at this incredible convergence and this momentum around this new way of thinking about ownership or access, that sort of thing. So you're absolutely right, and that's fine, and I still own things. Thank you. But, you know. <laughs> um, it was a bit disappointing, mm. though, that Norway has done so little. Um, and I know we're going to talk to Tommy later, but, you know, his deadline is February 6th. Mm. He's not going to let us know anything about what <laughs> we're going to publish. But what should we do now? What could we do now to make Norway move faster forward? So a couple, a few different ideas. And I have to say the timing of this conference is extraordinary. We didn't know that the review, or at least a draft of the review, would be published on Monday. It's quite amazing. I'm, I'm very happy to, and excited to, to see what the results are as well. So it depends. There's a lot of ways that the government can nudge or, or provide incentives to participate. I mean, I find one of those things, what, let's just say it's a tax incentive around car sharing. That's pretty straightforward. Um, you are, and, and this only happens in a very few places in the world, um, where I've had conversations around, why isn't there a bigger sharing economy? Why isn't there a more demand? And this is going to sound really blunt, but in, in a wealthier country, the other place I've seen this is Singapore, oh. where they're like, why don't we have a bigger sharing economy? The economic incentives for people to save money or to earn income in new ways don't resonate as much here, which it's, you're very, very lucky, but I would say that's still not an excuse. I mean, the, the environmental benefits are such, and just thinking about the urbanization and growth of Oslo and this, that, and the other, but that has been actually a real challenge. So from my perspective, one, a couple of the things that the government can do as well, in my work with governments around the world, I always like to remind them, they serve two roles. One is to regulate the external environment, you know, what's happening in the marketplace. Another, though, is how the city itself can start using and being a participant in the sharing economy. So you have, you all are familiar with Airbnb, and now you understand why I didn't talk about Airbnb and Uber, because there's so much other interesting stuff going on. <laughs> But Amsterdam has basically developed an Airbnb for municipal buildings. If they have idle space, community groups can come in and, and they have the ability of saying, um, if, they, if it's a community group or a nonprofit, they just offer it for free. If it's a business that needs access to this space, then they pay an hourly rate, et cetera, et cetera. And so for the city, it also becomes a new revenue source. But that's an idea that Oslo could use. Anybody, well. anybody could, yeah. 
Well, when you say that China say that they are going to aim at 10% sharing economy in the country, do you believe them? It's a great question. So I am uh, I one used of... to live in China. Yeah, I, I, well, I, and I have this crystal ball, you know, <laughs> black hole. I'm not sure what we want to call it. Um, we were chatting before the session, and I last year I was invited to be on the National Sharing Economy Commission for China, which is interesting in and of itself. Um, it's a brand new role. I can't really say much about it because it hasn't done much yet. I get the sense that it is true. China is defining the sharing economy quite broadly. They're defining it as collaborative production, collaborative consumption. They've got a little bit of peer-to-peer -peer finance in it. So, I mean, it's a broad definition around peer-based transactions. But 10% of the economy is rather large. So, having worked in China in the past, I'm not sure, you know, we'll find out in 2020 if they get to that goal. It is very clear that they have set that goal for themselves and that the sharing economy has shown up as one of their national priorities in their latest five-year plan. So it's getting a lot of investment, it's getting a lot of intention. Um, we'll have to see just, you know, how much they fund at the entrepreneurial level and things like that in the coming years. Mao Zedong would have loved it. Yeah, there's something, it I will admit too, wherever we are on the political spectrum, there is a very strong appeal of the sharing economy. If you tend to be on the left, it has a certain set of ideals. And if you tend to be on the right, it has a, another set of benefits and so forth. It's quite interesting. So what do you think are the biggest achievements that sharing economy could bring to the globe? Have you, have you had any thoughts like, ha? Huh, people are going to change, we're going to behave differently towards one another. Yeah, so I've been in this space a long time and many of you probably know too that there's a lot of debate around the sharing economy, whether it leads to lower living wages, more inequality, and these are all things that I care deeply about. So um, these days I'm spending a lot of my time in emerging markets, I'm looking at what the sharing economy means for low income populations and the elderly and marginalized communities and all of that. And I don't want to sound idealistic, so to speak, but because we've got this big umbrella term and there's a, lot, a little bit of everything that shows up under it, th there is still an enormous amount of benefit that accrues to people who wouldn't otherwise be able to participate in the, in the economy. They can, they can afford a car sharing membership, yeah. but they can't afford to own a car. That's, that's fantastic for this family. Once you have access to transport, then you have access to different education and extracurricular, and you can have different jobs. I mean, it, it's transformative. So I look to something where you know, everyone in the world would be able to participate in something like having access to, to personalized transport, which then has these ripple effects. Um, I'm, of all of the different benefits that we talk about, the economics, the environmental benefits, the community benefit, um, I still am most attracted by that community and social piece. Um, not all platforms are built with that in mind, but those that are, are uh, um, without question the most successful over really? time. Yeah, and there's an interesting statistic I always like to, to share with people in this, in this kind of setting. When, if you were to ask 10 people on day one, like the first day that they tried a sharing economy platform, why did you get involved? Like what prompted you to do it? Was it economics? Was it environment? Was it community? Nine out of 10 people say it was economics. It hit my pocketbook. Mm. I could save money, like why wouldn't I do this? Now if you ask those same 10 people, why did you stay involved? Why did you get active in more than one platform or initiative? Why did you, what, what made you go deeper? Those very, the numbers flip ex entirely. Nine out of 10 people say it was community. I felt like I was part of something bigger. I got to meet people I wouldn't have otherwise. Like, I loved it. Now you'll note that what doesn't show up in any of those things is environment. Um, and this is where it was echoed by, um, the speaker this morning, where if you start the conversation with environment, because I'm as big on the environmental um, benefits as anybody, but if you start the conversation with that, you often don't even get the door open. <laughs> but if you tell them, hey, you can save money, and then they're like, oh, that sounds good. And the moment that door is open, then you say, oh, and it's good for the environment too. They love it. Yeah. So you kind of have to do this reverse <laughs> engineering in terms of communications. 
You know, I'm going to say thank you so much. It's been more inspirational than scary, I must say. Much more inspirational, even thank at my you. age. Thank you so much for coming. My and, pleasure. Uh, yeah. Well, we need some more inspiration these days, I think. So. We do. <laughs> thank we do. you. Thank you so much. So, he is coming to help you. and.